uh, when Barack Obama was first running for president uh, in 2007 and then ultimately elected in 2008, uh, there was this perception that he was going to radically change the way that the U.S. fought its wars. Uh, he campaigned on a pledge to close Guantanamo, said that he was against torture, uh, pledged to basically dismantle the Bush-Cheney counterterrorism apparatus. Um, in reality, though, what has happened under President Obama's administration um, is that he has solidified some of the more egregious aspects of the Bush-Cheney program. And many of the changes that we've seen in the torture program, with the renditions, with the targeted killing program, they're largely rebranding uh, operations. Let me tell you a story about what the sort of state of oversight is right now in the U.S. Senate. There are a handful of U.S. Senators uh, that are allowed to go to what's called a Secured Classified Intelligence Facility, a SCIF, um, and to review certain memos, not all, but certain memos the White House has deemed appropriate to share with Congress. Congress, by law, is supposed to be overseeing all of the actions uh, that are conducted around the world on any given day. And there are certain members of Congress that are, by law, supposed to be briefed on covert actions, particularly lethal operations. The White House has been stonewalling Congress and not providing them with all of the documents about the kill program. How does an American citizen get on a kill list, and how do they get off a kill list short of being killed in a hellfire strike? So these limited number of senators and representatives go into these padded rooms, essentially. They're not allowed to bring a writing utensil. They can't bring paper. They're not allowed to bring anything with a battery. And they look at certain memos, not all, that the White House has agreed to show them. Um, and then they're not permitted to share what they've seen with anyone, not their constituents, not other lawmakers. Uh, that's the state of oversight on some of the most sensitive operations. It's thoroughly anti-democratic. The idea that even those that are elected with a mandate to oversee the actions of another branch of the US government are, are, are basically just given part of the story um, should be deeply offensive to all Americans. Corporations are totally in control of the U.S. electoral process. Members of Congress are basically bought and paid for by big oil, big pharma, big energy, big defense. There's no incentive to think differently about national security. It's all about the war toys. It's all about American exceptionalism. Unless we take a humility pill and realize how sort of out of control the system has gotten, the national security state, the surveillance state, all of these things come together. Unless we as a society make it our business um, to address the root cause of the problem, which is that corporations are running the show in the United States, then I don't have any faith that this bill passed by Congress or that bill passed by Congress is gonna have any meaningful impact. The story that we tell in Dirty Wars um, about covert US military action or CIA action around the world is deeply connected to the surveillance state in the United States and the recent revelations about the National Security Agency and the extent to which they're collecting uh, data and information. Um, you know, one, of the, one of the fundamental principles in a democratic society uh, is a free and vibrant press. And the, the role of journalists in a democratic society is, uh, should be to hold those in power accountable, regardless of who is in power, Democrats or Republicans, um, to give voice to the voiceless you know, fill in parts of the story that aren't being covered uh, by those in power, aren't, aren't being addressed by the powerful, and then to provide people with information that they can use to make informed decisions about what policies to support or oppose. What has happened under President Obama, and it certainly was happening under President Bush, is that journalism is being criminalized um, if you are cutting too close to the, uh, to the heart of the uh, national security state. You have whistleblowers that are being prosecuted in record numbers by the constitutional law expert president. Um, you have journalists that are having their phone records seized, that are, are being surveilled, are having their, uh, their discussions uh, intruded upon. Um, what the, the end result of this is an attempt to chill whistleblowers and to stop unauthorized people from talking with journalists. When you have a White House, such as the one we have right now with President Obama and his team, that engages in sort of official leaks. You know, there's WikiLeaks and then there's official leaks. They will leak classified information or stories that make them look like the great defenders of peace, freedom, and democracy around the world. Almost everything they leaked in the immediate aftermath of the Osama bin Laden raid turned out to be false, but they were managing a story. If journalists only have access to the official leaks and then the pronouncements of you know, the PR people spinning for the White House or the Pentagon or the CIA, that's, that, that's not a democratic press. That's not independently verifiable information. Um, what that is is propaganda. And so when you go after journalists and you go after whistleblowers, um, 
you're, you're, what you're doing is undermining the idea that you have a free press and you are criminalizing actual journalism by prosecuting whistleblowers or going after journalists. You're trying to intimidate them. How does this relate to the broader issue of Bradley Manning, of Edward Snowden, of the NSA whistleblower Thomas Drake? These are all people that in one way or another, and there are other whistleblowers, that in one way or another were so deeply disturbed by, what the, by the machine that they were a part of. The idea that, that some of the actions, even those that have been deemed legal, may actually be unconstitutional or immoral. In the case of Thomas Drake, he tried to go up his chain of command at the NSA, and, and they went after him for it. And so I think someone like Edward Snowden looks at what happened to whistleblowers who did try to do it through the system and says, I want to uh, put this out for the world to see because I am deeply concerned about the direction that my country is headed and that there are things being done in secret with US taxpayer dollars that the American people have a right to know about. And so I view all of these individuals, Manning, Snowden, Thomas Drake, and others, as people who were motivated by conscience to speak out and to reveal information to the American people that they believe uh, we have a right to know.